as somebody who had to write for it, what'd you think of the brand split? It's been pretty uh, polarizing over the years. Some people are really for it. Other people think it's a terrible idea. You could probably see the pros and cons of each side. What, what'd you think of that brand split? I mean, the brand split was, yeah, there are pros and cons. It was exciting when it first happened because they split up the writers as well. And they named, you know, Paul Heyman and I lead writers of uh, Raw and SmackDown. Like as I wrote about in the book, I was convinced that I was going to be the lead writer of SmackDown because all my buddies, quote unquote, were on, on that show. We did the draft first and then we were told about the writing staff split second. So this SmackDown show was staffed with people that I worked with and loved writing for in the rock and Jericho and Kurt and edge. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to remember all them, uh, you know, whereas on raw, you had a lot of people that you would think that Paul would be more comfortable with, with Austin and undertaker and NWO. Uh, so when Vince announced that I would be on raw and Paul would be on SmackDown, it was, yeah, it was jarring. That's from a personal standpoint, from a fan standpoint. Um, yeah, I mean, I get it. I definitely get it as far as like, it, it, like splitting, you know, when, when, let me backtrack. When SmackDown first came out, I was like a lot of people were going like, ah, this is the uh, turning point here. This is just too much to follow yeah. in uh, a single week. I don't have four hours. And with a pay-per-view every four weeks, sometimes seven hours, if you're a diehard Sunday night, heat pen eight hours of time to devote to this. Um, I'm going to, you know, and it wasn't like DVRs where, you know, like nobody knows how to set a VCR. Um, yeah. Like that was a very, very challenging thing to like set your VCR and then like, you know, sit down and find time to watch four hours plus of TV every single week. So I definitely got the, um, I got the idea and the strengths behind splitting the brands. Um, and from a creative standpoint too, you're not burning out the matches. You're not burning out the talent. In fact, if anything, you're letting talent that wouldn't necessarily have time to shine on the co-branded shows now have the opportunity to step up to the plate. Um, so all of that stuff made sense, you know, from a fan standpoint, you know, you're nodding, you know, when you hear these, uh, you know, the rationalization and going like, yeah, but when I watch raw, I want to see the rock on raw, or I want to see Chris Jericho or Kurt Angle on raw. Uh, they're not on raw. Raw is less than now. So I'm not as interested. Um, you know, and that's been a, it's been the, perpetual challenge ever since 2002 because you know there's always these brand splits there's always these drafts i remember like that like <laughs> i put on my old man hat and be like my day the draft used to mean something you're on that show you stayed on that show um but even that really wasn't the case because you'd have you know run-ins and then i forget what there was some sort of like i forgot what the buzzword was when you'd have all of a sudden oh, the special exemption what have you like the, the brand splits never truly the brand split anyway, because the ratings start to go down. There's panic. they will be like, Oh, well, the champions could be on both shows. Oh, the, the number one contenders could be on, you know, you know what? You don't even need a reason. They just show up. And then all of a sudden it's like a limited brand split. I always thought that would have been the best. Um, you know, again, hindsight being 2020, I think that would have been like the better thing to do is to be like, not everyone is going to show up on every single show every week, but there's not this split as far as these people only on Raw, these people only on SmackDown. It's like you could primarily have these people on SmackDown and these people on Raw, but you don't have to set these rules about who could show up and when. And, you know, if you go into Raw knowing, well, technically speaking, anybody could show up any day, um, you know, that might enhance the show a little bit. 